Anybody need a mic help? Anybody? <laughs> Here, Fox Tully, what, what has it meant for your career to have been able to come back here so many years after so many years? How has that uh, helped your growth here? So many years I feel old. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just my, my process. Um, I love Maryland. I love being here. I love working with the coaches, the guys, um, the community over here. They're very supportive. Um, I think this is just part of my journey, part of God's plan for me to come back and uh, try to reach the goals that I have for college and um, try to, you know, do everything we can to, to reach our goals over here. So I feel good. How important is it for as part of that journey to be a more vocal leader? I know a guy like Demas maybe was that in the past, maybe passed the torch to you now. Uh, how have you seen yourself grow in that department? Yeah, I think, uh, like you said, you know, I had guys when I was a young guy, I was like Demas. Some of the guys still on the team, like Jones, you know, Fanage, guys like that. And um, now that I'm older, um, I think they really trained me. You know, they helped mature me to become more vocal, um, not only uh, on the field, but also off the field, you know, helping people do the right thing and stuff like that. So um, I'm kind of taking more responsibility in that role. And um, yeah, I'm just continuing to work on it. And I also got a good bunch of guys, uh, a lot of senior guys that helped me with it too. So. What kind of, because you, know, you are soft spoken, so what kind of leader are, like, you know, is it vocal, is it showing them, is it a little bit of both? What, what how would you categorize it? I think uh, growing up for me, I think my style of leading is more uh, by example, more just showing people. Um, and then when I, when I uh, came here, now I'm the older guy, now I have to be more vocal, you know, um, so yeah, I think that's my style, more showing. So we with, with Coach Locksley putting out there that it's time for this program to compete for Big Ten championships. How much did that kind of influence your thinking and coming back here and playing another year? Yes, sir. I think that was the, the biggest goal. Um, I think the past couple of years we're in the process of it. Um, we got to be honest with ourselves and look at reality. And I think now we're at that point where you know where we can compete for championships and we can win the champ Big Ten championship and stuff like that. So I think uh, all the hard work and the years built up till now is. Uh, brought us to the place where we are right now, and uh, uh, that's how we feel. Yeah, that we're ready. When Mike says that, is that a lot of pressure? No, sir. I think that was the whole mindset this whole time. Um, I felt like I wasn't going to leave this place without my my feet touching the the uh, turf in Indianapolis. And that was the whole plan we had this whole time, and um, I'm happy that you know in my fifth year in college, fourth year over here, and uh, we're ready to do it. So. How nice is it to hear a coach say that, you know, because some people want to shy away from it. And, and even he said in, in previous years he wasn't ready. So does that, you know, have you and the guys felt that that's motivated you a little more? Or does that give you a little extra giddy up when, when you hear a coach say that? Um, yes, sir. I mean, uh, our, our whole plan is always to win the Big Ten Championship. And it's not like coach is saying that because he doesn't believe in us. It's just the process. It's all a process, you know, winning in the Big Ten is a – difficult task, you know, every week and you gotta put your best foot forward every every time and I think just the culture we built here um, really, you know, influenced us and really encouraged us to have that confidence to say those things. So we so are working with Coach Gaddis now this year, what are some of the things that are different that he's teaching you and do you even after all the numbers you put up here in this program, can you push it even further with some of the things that, that, that are gonna be in his offense? One hundred percent. I think Coach Gaddis is a really good coach. Um, just the time I've been with him now, I think he's really big on the details, the fundamentals, and um, just me playing confident, me playing at, at my best, me feeling comfortable. Um, I think that's the biggest thing, as well as the, the other quarterbacks and coaches that help help me. And um, I, I think the sky's the limit for us. I, I for sure want to um, have a better year than I did the last couple of years, and uh, I feel like we can do that for sure with Coach Gaddis now in our offense for sure. Julia, Coach Lotsy talked about some of the close losses last year being the difference this year in, in trying to win those games for you, what would that mean? How would how would that happen for you? Uh, the time I was well, taking that. taking something that's a close game, turning it from a close loss to a close win. Right. What do you have have to do in your game to, to be careful, more careful about or execute a little bit better? Um, well, I think ball security for sure. I 
think uh, it's something we've been working on. My decision making, uh, knowing what checks to make, knowing what reads to make, and um, making the plays. I think last year, I think if you look at all our close games, we're about adding it all together, we're probably like nine plays away from uh, beating those teams, the Ohio State, the Michigans, and the Purdue, stuff like that. So I think, uh, but if you were to revert back to it, it's all disciplinary stuff, you know, knowing who my read key is. Uh, what's that called? Jumping off sides, false starts, you know, stuff like that just um, killing us. And I think another big one is scoring in the red zone. I think we got in the red zone probably three times in the first half against Ohio State. Uh, probably three times. We got to like the fringe area against Michigan and didn't come away with points. So I think those are things we need to do in order to beat those big teams. Well, you talk about the weapons you have on offense, wide receivers, running back, expectations for the offense, and for yourself. Yes, sir. We got weapons all over the field. Um, receivers, y'all already know about the receivers, the tight ends. I think that's really the sleeper group. You know, Corey Dyke just leading them. Um, the running back loaded. Um, and I think the expectation for us is to win the Big Ten Championship. I mean, that's all we talk about over here. Um, that's, our, that's our biggest goal. All the seniors, we want that. This whole team, we want that. And um, anything short is unsuccessful. So. From a technical standpoint, Tully, where do you feel you, you've worked on and improved since the end of this last offseason, and what are your expectations? Where do you want to see that growth this fall? Too? Um, I think this whole offseason, I've been working more on my legs. I'm trying to get my knees stronger, my legs stronger. Those are things the past two seasons that have been bothering me, um, really early in the season, too. So just trying to get my legs stronger. I think Coach uh, Ryan Davis has done a great job, and as well as Brian Simmons with them, you know, with doing treatment and stuff like that, helping me out. So I think, I think uh, my biggest thing is just being healthy. Uh, your wealth is your, your health is your wealth. So that's something I really got to take care of. And I feel like if I'm at my best, then you know we'll be good. We heard a lot about the depth of the running back room. How do you sort of differentiate between those guys? What makes each of them unique and special and different? Yeah, um, all our running backs are are really good. Um, they're hard workers. I think they're uh, really close knit group and um, you know you got Roman who's really fast and you got Antoine who's like a power back but can also run. Uh, you got Kobe McDonald who's a very short, quick, shifty back. And you got Ramon Brown who really can do it all. And uh, yeah those guys I'm excited to see what, what uh, they're about to do uh, this season for us and um, I love working with them. Jay Sean Jones is the only guy on this roster who can call you the new guy still. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what does it mean to have him back for one more fall? Yeah, Jay Sean, that was a big one for me. Uh, that's my boy. And uh, we kind of talked about it together, um, seeing what we wanted to do and stuff like that. So uh, at the end of the day, I'm just happy he's here, uh, here with us. Uh, the team is really happy. And um, he's one of our vocal leaders as well, um, stepping into that, into that role now. He's leading the um, receiver room. And he's also one of the leaders who speaks vocally uh, to our offense as well. So I'm very happy to be back. Speaking of receivers, what's your impression of Tyrese Chambers? Tyrese, uh, really good. I think his uh, one of his biggest things that he flips me out about is how he tracks the ball. I think when the ball's in the air, he knows how to track it. And um, his route running is really smooth. Yeah, he's a smooth player. So that's my boy. Mm -hmm. Number three, talk to us, man. What do you have to work on this year? I think for me, uh, not really thinking about any of that right now. I think the biggest thing for us is just taking this one day at a time. Um, keep the main thing the main thing, which is winning championships, winning games, week in and week out. And for us to do that, we need to be disciplined. We need to uh, continue to stick together. I think that's the main goal for, for this fall camp, just continuing to build the bond, continuing to get closer, knowing we got a lot of um, new players, stuff like that. So continue to work and, and think of Townsend when it's time to think of him. So. Do you hold any grudges against Keith for not